Good morning, everybody. And welcome to today's webinar, where Dataverse and CUA2 adopters will share their experiences of these OAI PMH endpoints. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Recording. The webinar is being recorded and will be published online. If you do not wish to appear in the recording, please keep your video off and your microphone muted. The contents of the question pane will not be recorded, but any questions submitted may be put to the panelists along with the name of the submitter and added to a document on questions and answers, which will be made available later. Asking questions. Some of you submitted questions as part of the registration process. These have been circulated to the panel in advance and will be answered first. You'll also have the opportunity to submit text questions to the panel by typing them in the question pane of the control panel for GoToWebinar. You may submit them any time during the webinar. We will address as many of them as possible during the general Q&A session. Now I'd like to introduce the panelists. Uh, I'm John Shepherdson, um, who's attached to SES Domain Office. Uh, we've got Tony from FSD, who will be answering questions on CUA2. Alina from Pregido Sciences Po, Dataverse. Baptiste from Pregido Sciences Po, uh, questions on Dataverse. Lara from Dan's Nor, Dataverse. Ricardo, APIS, CUA2. Patricia, APIS, CUA2. And Gregor, ADP, Dataverse. And Sajaya from ADP is running the webinar for us. So, without further ado, ado sorry, ado, without further ado, um, we will start on the questions. So, some questions that were submitted in advance. Uh, we're going to CUA2 Dataverse from Nestar. Will Sesda will says to give us the ability to make some tests with a new version of OAI. Um, yes, um, I think I can start by answering that one. Um, yes, says there has uh, recently um, created a metadata validator tool, uh, which has uh, five different levels of validation, and that will allow um, service providers to test sample um, OAI PMH um, output in the form of the XML files to see whether it's compliant with the CMM. Uh, has anybody on the panel actually used the metadata validator? Have you got any experience of, of using that to test your files? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, in AppEach, the Portuguese uh, Archive of Social Information, we have already used it to test the, the DDI files, XML files that come from Nestar. So, but with the Dataverse, we don't have uh, yet that experience because we are in the process of uh, installing Dataverse. Yes, but there are and some errors. Yes, and we have already reported them. Yeah. Is it easy to use? Yes, yes, very user friendly because we can choose the basic, uh, the, the type of validation that we want to test. Yes, and the profile 122 or 2.5, which is ML file. Yes. Okay, so good. Uh, thank you. Anybody else on the panel uh, has experience of using the metadata validator? Uh, Alina wants to speak, but I think she has uh, an issue with the. Uh... Her mic, yes, but uh, at, uh, we, we tried it uh, at uh, Science Po uh, at Pogido. <laughs> uh, but we still have some uh, issues uh, about our data sets and we're working on it. But it's great to have uh, this tool to try uh, our data. Oh, you can okay, speak. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now I believe Alina's um, unmuted yeah. now. Oh, no, I think Baptiste said everything I wanted to say too. So yeah, it's really easy to use and really useful also. Okay, 
Thank you. Uh, anybody else on the panel or shall we move on to the next question? Uh, hello, good morning. Um, we tested it out too. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I agree, it's really nice and easy to use. Um, we had some errors too. Uh, and I believe we also forwarded some of the recommendations uh, regarding metadata. Okay, good. Okay, well, that sounds like a thumbs up for the metadata validator from the experience of the panelists. Thank you. So we'll move on. Next question. Uh, we understand that the DDI output of Dataverse cannot be modified. Is there a way to make it CDC compliant? Uh, Dataverse experts? Um, is that statement correct in the first place? And if it is correct, uh, then what have you done in order to make the output of Dataverse um, suitable for harvesting by the CESDA data catalog? Uh, we are still working on it because there are still some issues and we couldn't get it to work for the says that catalog uh, but we think we we will have some news uh, from uh, dataverse in some months because we are collaborating with them to fix some issues in the ddi okay and i hope we will be in the catalog soon <laughs> what okay, we right. did is that we we had to uh, do some extra work before the importing the metadata from Nestar to Dataverse uh, and we did it uh, outside Dataverse so it was work we worked previously on the XMLs unfortunately or fortunately I don't know how to put it uh, our metadata is in French uh, so uh, for all the data centers that have uh, metadata in other languages than English you'll see there are some light issues with the display of the metadata and especially of the controlled vocabularies in Dataverse but as Baptiste said we are working with Dataverse to uh, uh, to figure this out and uh, yeah we are pretty sure that in not long uh, we'll have a proper display and a proper in Dataverse and a proper import in the CDC. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I think you <clears throat> should make a distinction between the output and what you see in the in the user interface. Because what you see in the user interface, you can um, add fields if you want to, quite easily. <clears throat> but uh, the output is more difficult to adjust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for us. Uh, no, the fields are not the problem. We have everything we need uh, in Dataverse at the study level. Um, so the, the display is a problem uh, for the time being of some controlled vocabularies, as I said, and the output also because uh, sometimes our DDI is not exactly what you would expect. Uh, so we are working on that. Okay, lovely, thank you. Okay, next question. Um, is Dataverse or CUA2 a solution for an institution that has very limited IT support or resources? Is uh, any repository sustainable with very limited IT support? Uh, can we hear first from a CUA2 specialist, please? Can you manage CUA2 with very limited IT support once you've got it set up and running? Hi, Ricardo from uh, APIS, Lisbon. Um, well, we are fortunate that we have uh, received uh, recently um, an infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure with VMware uh, that uh, makes things easier for us. Um, then this is the technical um, hardware that is needed. In terms of top of uh, software, uh, the person must be versatile in Linux. Um, so the 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 answer to that depends. If uh, there is few persons there in IT and no Linux, uh, 
maybe there is a solution. Um, the hardware uh, can be measurable, um, but in our case, it, it, it is a great solution. Uh, so, put it uh, put it straightforward. I think um, it is a kind of balance, uh, but you need uh, human resources that know uh, Linux, open source, uh, VMware infrastructure, uh, how to mount it, and then it is needed uh, time of availability uh, so that the IT personnel can take uh, care of these issues. So if he, the institution is very, very limited in terms of hardware or software, uh, software, I mean brainware, uh, <laughs> human personal, human personal, uh, yeah, this can be an issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, any any more contributors on CUA two first before we pass over to Dataverse? Okay. Um, Dataverse. Um, is Dataverse a solution for an institution that has limited IT support? Would you say? Uh, I would say it's uh, it's a bit complicated uh, because there are a lot of thing, things to consider when uh, installing Dataverse. Uh, you have to have a great uh, backup. Uh, uh, you have to back up it. Uh, uh, I mean, if you don't want to lose data, you you have to have a great uh, uh, IT support to handle that. Uh, it, it depends on what you want to do, but maybe a solution to that could be to uh, collaborate with other Dataverse uh, repository to to be uh, to upload your data, data set inside their own uh, repository, uh, since uh, if you don't have, uh, if you have a limited uh, IT support, it could be dangerous for your data, and you could lose lose them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Anything to add? I can add that we are in the shock project, busy with. Um, yeah, researching if a, a Dataverse installation for whole SESTA would be possible, or also for Daria or uh, Claren. Um, next year we'll, we will do a report on, on the sustainability of such a service and well, we have to wait what comes out of it. So maybe in the future there might be that um, some infrastructures have a, a dataverse where all the service providers could could join if they don't have the the IT support for it to host the instance themselves. But that's okay, still so, so sorry to butt in. So Laura, if I if I understand then um, the proposal might be to provide repository services behind dataverse instance so that those service providers who haven't got that capability uh, could have that provided as a third-party service yes 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 it's uh, a bit similar we host as dance uh, dataverse nl and um, and we have a lot of institutions that deposit our their data at dataverse nl but these are universities that don't host their own repository but we do that uh, yeah in, in cooperation with them so we do the technical stuff and they do the data management stuff Mm -hmm. So they have their own sub dataverse within the dataverse NL instance. And, and how long have you been running that? Uh, since Dons has done that since 2014, I guess. Okay. It was first um, uh, uh, set up by one or two universities, but it has grown since. So, and in 2014, Dons took took it over. Okay, All right. that's good to know. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll pass on to the... Sorry, go on. Yeah, um, I would like to add that um, I believe that some IT support is definitely needed uh, for installation and uh, for customization. Um, we are uh, still uh, developing our Dataverse installation and um, 
we are actually uh, employing an outside programmer to work on adding some additional metadata fields um, which are not available in the default installation of Dataverse. Uh, so for example, um, the SESDA controlled vocabularies and the else keywords. Um, so yeah, I think some IT support is definitely needed. Okay. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll pass on to the next question then. Um, can a data manager import an XML file to Dataverse or CUA2 without IT help? It's sort of along the, the theme of the previous question, but a more specific. We we'll so start on CUA. Okay. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, let's start on CUA. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, like you said, it comes in the previous comes from the previous question. Uh, so my answer, I think it is needed because uh, we can give you a copy of the command, uh, but it will be, you have to use the Linux, you have to come to the shell, uh, and this is in the optimal way. I give you a, a, a copy of the command so that you reach the keyboard, type the command, uh, or even in the historical, or the history of the, the commands, uh, if it will be there. But if the, this is the optimal way, but if something goes wrong, if the machine resets uh, and that IT support is not there, uh, or something goes wrong, or the server doesn't restart, so this can be an issue again. So uh, again, my, my, post, my, post, my posture is, I think, uh, in general, <laughs> need if things go optimal maybe not but in general yes you need uh, hi everyone uh, Tony Sisla here the main developer of Kuha 2 uh, it, it uh, actually depends on the setup that you have uh, for instance you could have a shared folder uh, and when you drag and drop an XML file to the shared shared folder uh, some uh, uh, timed job should be able to pick up the XML file and import it directly to <coughs> Kuha. So uh, if the setup is made like that, then it should be quite easy for anyone without uh, Linux or shell knowledge to, to actually import and manage the contents within Kuha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to recap then, Tony, you're saying that it can, Kuha can be set up so there's a designated directory where um, data managers just need to drop their files and periodically a script will run in the background and do the upload to Kuha 2 for them. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's actually how we have it set up. Okay, sounds very straightforward. Um, and, Anything else on Kua 2 before we move to Dataverse? Um, okay. Yes, I, I can just say that uh, Ricardo is, uh, is a big help for me because uh, even if I know something about XML file or uh, to export DDI files from Nestar to so to Kua, it's I, I cannot deal with the, with the endpoint. For example, I have not uh, IT knowledge to do that. So I think there's uh, there's the need of IT help, yes. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Uh, right. So uh, can we answer this question for Dataverse, please? Can a data manager import an XML file to Dataverse without IT help? So for the configuration we have, uh, we can't. I can't, I'm a content person and uh, I can't and it's much needed. Uh, so it would be really helpful if uh, we could set this up. Uh, we are looking at it uh, now. Uh, maybe, Baptiste, you can add more if you want to. Uh, yeah, uh, when we wanted to import uh, uh, DDI files into Dataverse, uh, we used the command line to do so. Uh, but yeah, we, we didn't use uh, any user interface to do 
this. Okay. Anything else? I was wondering, I think this, this question is from a, a migration perspective, I think. Yes. Yeah. Because if you want to just upload one file, you could use the API, but then you can't use XML as, as import. You need a JSON file. Yeah. Or, but for migration, yeah, we don't have experience with that ourselves from Nestar to Dataverse. Okay, um, thanks. We'll move on to the next question. Um, to what extent have the service providers that use CUA2 and Dataverse considered the SESDA metadata model in their implementation? So did you, did you have to change things much when you were preparing the data for export via an OAI PMH endpoint? knowing that um, the data catalog uses the says the metadata model uh kua2 uh to be honest um this is a still a phase that we are entering so i didn't i don't have experience to report on on this um so any answer that i say here is it's 50 50. so uh, i don't have experience and to know if it is uh, cmm uh, uh, in their in their implementation so i don't know yes we you we are um in the, in the process of installing Dataverse, so we just use Cua with the Nestar, and we try to to comply with the, most of the, the fields of CMM, but uh, um, especially regarding the Data Catalog, so that uh, our studies are combined with most of the metadata fields that are re required for the Data Catalog, yes. Okay. Okay, anything to add? Uh, data bus? Uh, uh, so, in our case, yeah, go ahead, Matthias, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go. <laughs> No, 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 uh, sorry, go, okay. Go ahead. Uh, so having, I think, uh, having uh, d discussions on issues is really good uh, to. Do. Uh, for Dataverse, there are, there are already several tools to to do that. Uh, they have an IRC chat if you want to try chat directly to the Dataverse community. They also have a Google group community and a GitHub where you can uh, create issues and uh, ask for for help about that. Uh, I think you're answering a different question. Oh, sorry, maybe I um, skipped. The... Yeah, I, I think you what, skipped... what I can add. Yes. Yeah, maybe what I can add. Uh, we used the CMM, and it was a great help. A great help for us because it it gave us a a, point, a, a direction uh, when we. Uh, we got data metadata out of Nestar. Uh, we 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 uh, performed some work on the XML files with th some scripts, some R scripts. One of my colleagues that is no longer with us, unfortunately, did that, uh, and we we respected the CMM. Uh, we the, the control vocabularies, all that. It was of great help, and then we imported uh, everything into uh, into Dataverse. Uh, so yes, I think uh, when you 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 start a project like this of migrating ma metadata from Nestar to Dataverse, or the platform is not important in the end. But uh, when you you start doing this it's useful to to look for recommendations and system recommendations are 
the best, I think, in uh, regarding uh, social sciences metadata. Uh, so yeah, definitely for us, it was a no-brainer if we were to do this work. Uh, so we had to to respect CMM recommendations. Okay. Anything else from the database community on this? No. Okay, the next question is, is linked in a way. Um, is it possible to extend the metadata schema to make it compliant with current and future, and this is the important thing, uh, future versions of CMM? If so, is that done by configuration or coding of the tool? And what impact, if any, do changes to the metadata scheme have on the operation of the application? So basically, how flexible is the metadata schema of, let's start with Dataverse, and if CMM changes, uh, say, next year, is that going to be a major headache, or is it fairly straightforward to make the changes you would need in Dataverse? Uh, you, you can configure uh, Dataverse to to add uh, fields, uh, so you can you could add uh, CMM fields, but uh, modifying or deleting some field could could be uh, uh, a bit Problem. challenging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if it's uh, it's updated in the future, maybe we'll have some issues because we need to do some work inside the database uh, and it's a bit complicated but, but basically uh, i don't think on it yeah. sorry i don't think sorry sorry i don't think we'll delete any fields so uh, no i would say it's flexible it's pretty flexible what we might do is to add maybe but fields so that's easier Okay, so um, so far verdict on uh, Dataverse is as long as you're adding, that's fine, but subtracting fields would be problematic. Okay. Okay. Um, shall we move on, or is there more to say on that? Uh, in that case, I think we'll move on. Thank you. Um, okay, this is just about technical documentation, just to make sure that there's comprehensive technical documentation available. And so, is it possible then for, let's say, start with Kua 2, to find documentation that covers system requirements, the storage types used, the database requirements, the general scaling approach, and that sort of level of technical detail? Kua 2? Yeah. Um, so, uh, the documentation is uh, pretty forward, uh, it, it is online, it's available. Uh, and when you when you try to implement Kua2 in your infrastructure, uh, the instructions that are there, except one or two, we, where John um, helped, uh, but in general it was very straightforward, and uh, you can find uh, the help that you need online. Then there is one or two issues that, in my case, in my personal case, I contacted John directly. And, uh, and Tony, but uh, it was it was really straightforward. Yeah, it's good to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, any anything to add, Q2? Yeah, uh, yeah. There's this uh, kind of uh, in installation uh, tutorial uh, type of getting started uh, chapter in the in the documentation. But uh, I think I think it needs needs more work. Uh, for instance, on how to set up this shared folder kind of periodic uh, synchronization thing, <laughs> which which isn't isn't mentioned at the documentation at all. So so there's one one item for my to do list to to now, uh, now add to the now documentation. Now you understand my fault. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 hard uh, since since I'm the de developer. Uh, it's hard for me to uh, understand all the issues that that a user might might face since it's all all clear to me. So this is really helpful. Yeah. Okay, and for Dataverse, 
does such documentation exist in your experience? Uh, yes, uh, I don't have anything to add about that. I think the, the Dataverse community is very, that's that's a major uh, advantage also of using Dataverse because the community is really reactive and uh, on the one hand and uh, the developers, the Dataverse developers of Harvard are also reactive uh, if you have an issue or, and also the documentation is pretty straightforward. So yeah, we are really happy with that. Okay, uh, we'll move on then. Um, does uh, Dataverse have support for a multilingual user interface? Yes, uh, there, there is. Uh, you can add uh, already multiple languages, uh, but maybe your language is not translated yet, uh, but you can contribute to uh, to translate uh, into your own language. Okay, um, just for the sake of numbers, do you have an idea of approximately how many languages have been translated? Uh, no, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I don't either, sorry. But it's a work in progress and uh, once again they are really reactive, so I know for French we contributed at the certain point so you can just contribute if your language is not translated yet also uh, i can I... share a, a link to uh, how you can contribute to uh, a link to the tool to used to translate a dataverse uh, it's called webblade and i think we can see how many languages there are uh, on in there so Yes, the Webplate 2, we, this is also part of the shock project uh, to use it. So we're still testing it. But there's a, a GitHub from the global Dataverse community. And a special uh, repository is made for the language packs. I can see if I have a, a link. It should be there. And there are several uh, languages available, but some are maybe not yet complete because some service providers, I think, started uh, during a Dataverse EU project with translation, but I don't think any of those are complete or for the, the newest version yet. I'm not sure. But there's definitely uh, a support for a multilingual interface, yes. Okay. And a growing number of translations by the sound of it. So. Uh, both through Webla oh, sorry, both through Dataverse directly and through the efforts of the shop project. Okay, uh, and for Kua2? Uh, in terms of interface? Uh, uh, yes, in terms of, of uh, multilingual interface, yeah. Well, uh, we, we use English. <laughs> Uh, but the studies are in Portuguese, so to be honest, we didn't know the, the difference because we didn't need it. But uh, the studies, uh, to which some of them are in Portuguese, uh, we have some difficulties. We are doing by the book, uh, but there's something that we are doing wrong. Uh, but in terms of interface, that is the question. We don't have experience because we use it the English as default. So uh, I don't know how to answer that, that question. Yes, so maybe I can add something because uh, our files are from Nestar and there's only one field in Nestar to, 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 to put the language. And then, uh, yes, there is the, the, the XML file should be multilingual, but maybe there's, I've been in contact with Wolfgang, and uh, maybe there will be a monolingual profile that can help us with that. Maybe it will solve some issues. Because XML lang, uh, the field appears in every field, yes. 
uh, and so we cannot uh, put some fields in uh, Portuguese and some fields in English because there's only one uh, monolingual profile in Nestar. Yes. So let's see what happens. Uh, oh yes. So you're talking there about the metadata validator and um, yes, but not only, but because of XML files that we can uh, have XML lang only one. Uh, it's only it's uh, only used once. Yes. So we cannot, uh, we cannot have a multilingual uh, profile, yes. Okay, so, so there will be support for checking uh, monolingual XML files coming uh, with the uh, <laughs> metadata validator. Uh, that's, that's good. Um, okay, are we, are we done with that? Should we move on to the next question? Uh, this is another techie one. Um, and it's about observability, really, of the application when it's in operational use. Um, what monitoring and logging options exist? Uh, or maybe the question should be, do monitoring and logging options exist? Um, for Kua 2, can you see what it's doing when it's running? Well, my answer will be kind of, will have a kind of bias because I am a Linux native. So <laughs> I have a lot of tools to monitoring and observing and controlling. Uh, uh, so, and this is Linux based. I, I don't know if by, and, and if Kua have some monitoring tools, well, I don't need it if they have, uh, but uh, the tools offered by the Linux, uh, it's sufficient for me. Okay. Yes, to, to add to that, uh, Kuha itself does not have any monitoring. Uh, all monitoring is supposed to be done by the operator. Uh, but regarding logging, uh, you can control the lo log level uh, via configuration options and the, all, all software components output log messages in JSON. So they're mm -hmm. structured. Yes. Okay, and for Dataverse, uh, I know there are also. Uh, I, I know there are some logs uh, for Dataverse, uh, but I don't have um, a lot of experience with that. Maybe someone else uh, has. Uh, you yeah. can. Check. Sorry. No. Uh, you can check the, the logs about um, all the activity that uh, users are uh, doing. So, but but it's not very um, inter it's not in an interface. You have it's, it's a text document, so you you it's not um, graphics. So. Okay. Okay, so the information is available, but the interpretation of it is um, manual. Yeah. By the sounds of it. Okay. And uh, you also, I guess, um, you have to have access to the server and um, go to the logs uh, via uh, shell. And so, so it's not uh, it's not in the application. Um, but the logs are there. Okay, logs are there. Okay, um, thank you. Um, uh, okay, uh, we'll check again. Um, is there an API available? So can you actually um, either input or export information from the, uh, the tool? Well, clearly you can export it via an OAI PMH. Um, API. Um, so let's let's talk more about import. Can you? Is there an API API available to allow you to inject uh, data and metadata into the system? Let's start with Kua two. Uh, well, I I don't know. Uh, I know what is an API, but here I don't know what you mean. But if you want, uh, okay, maybe I should clarify. If you wanted to um, upload um, metadata uh, into this into the system, 
um, via another program rather than sitting at the user interface and typing it in. Could you do that? Or if you wanted to make modifications to the metadata schema, um, could you do that via an API, via an external program? So that, that's really what this is about is, um, is there external programmatic access to, to the application? Ah, in that case, no, I use just the handlers. Uh, I don't okay. use, I don't know if there is, if it exists. Okay. So the, the, all of the software components in, in Kuha uh, uh, communicate via HTTP APIs, but, but it's just for the content. So only, only for the um, uh, study metadata. Uh, so you cannot, uh, for instance, alter the database schema from within an API. So it's only for content management. Okay, fine, thank you. So how about for Dataverse? Do people have experience of using an API with Dataverse? Uh, yes, uh, we actually uh, moved uh, data set from Nesta uh, to uh, Dataverse using the API. Uh, we imported the DDI files uh, with the Dataverse API and we could also uh, update uh, the metadata afterwards uh it's it's really cool uh, there are a lot of um, features in this api it's really uh, uh comprehensive i think uh, okay anything to add do do you happen to know if that's a secure api do you have to um authenticate or uh, pass a token or something in like that when you're using it uh Is yes it you actually uh, you actually have to create a token uh, from uh, the dataverse uh, user interface to use the api okay thank you and uh oh, keeping with this rich tech theme um is there a management console for managing the tool or um, is all the administration done at the command line? So Kua 2, um, do, you have, do you have some screens for managing user access and configuration options, or do you just have to uh, grind it out in the console? Yes, uh, since I am the only one, uh, since I am the only one that uses the, the infrastructure, so, and like I said before, I am Linux native, so I use uh, the command line straightforward. Okay, um, and that, that's because um, there isn't a management console or because um, the, con the command line's in your blood. It sounds a lot like the latter, but... <laughs> uh, yes, <okay>. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Kuha, Kuha 2 does, does not have any graphic uh, user interface. It's it's all command line. Okay. Uh, but going going back to that question of the CMM, uh, you noticed by my answer that is Patricia that do the CMM, the model, and I do the IT stuff, right? So you, you, you understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and how about for Dataverse? Is there um, a graphical user interface for managing users and access and configuration options? Uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of uh, settings you can do from the user interface uh, that you could also do from the command line uh, using the API. Uh, for example, you could uh, manage access and permissions and also uh, Maybe um, filters for each uh, uh, dataverse you have. Uh, like uh, in the, you can manage the the search tool and every permission. It's uh, really comprehensive too. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so to the next question 
Okay, this is about um, authentication. Uh, so uh, logging in and the permissions that you get. Uh, um, I'm guessing it goes without saying that both tools have an internal user management model. But the question is, can you connect to something like um, Edugain um, or some other external um, off, off mechanism? So that you don't have to create users that only exist within within the single application, but um, you use institutional credentials or whatever from from the federation. So um, for CUA two, can you can you connect to external auth auth? Um, uh, I think Tony it's better answer that one because I use like the reasons that I explained before. Uh, I don't know if it is available or not because in my case it was not needed by the reason that I explained it before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Kuha2 uh, does not have any authentication besides the database system. So you have database admin credentials, and then you have the database read-only credentials, and then you have the database writer credentials. But there is no other user management mm -hmm. within Kuha. And no, you can connect to external authentication for the database for instance so it's only only for that uh, okay, so, you, so if i understand tony then that all of the data um uploads and changes modifications they all appear to be done by the same user is that is that right because there is only one user id for for those operations um uh, so there's there's multiple users against the database interface. There's the okay. admin credentials and, and read-only credentials and write credentials. But uh, to, to gain access to the, the document store, it, it depends on the front, front end proxy. So you should have a, a restricted access to the uh, document store instance which is the uh, uh, service in front of the database. And that service can control the contents of the database. And uh, then you have the repository handlers, which are accessible from the uh, World Wide Web, from the internet. And they only have read-only access to the uh, document store or database. So a user uh, user cannot change the contents of, of the database from from the internet, but uh, the user must be in some some kind of uh, internal network, so he or she can make modifications to the actual database. Okay, thank you. Um, Dataverse, can anyone answer this for Dataverse? Uh, yes, uh, we in our case we use the um, we have an external uh, login option, external account login option. Uh, we use uh, Shibboleth to do that, but there are also uh, OAuth uh, options and uh, OpenID uh, that you could use to to do that. Okay, okay, so pretty comprehensive then. Good old yes. shibboleth. Good old shibboleth. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on. Um, is the source code available under an approved open source license? Kua2. Uh, I think Kua2 is under the European public uh, license. So the code is available. Um, and therefore, we can stretch it and modify it. Uh, according with that license, uh, as we have, a, as we desire, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And dataverse. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's open source uh, too. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, Documentation, I think, um, 
I think we've touched on documentation really, excuse me, when we asked the previous technical questions in terms of tech documentation. Uh, let's look at user documentation um, for um, the user community in terms of data managers. Uh, do you find that there's comprehensive um, documentation to help you understand how to use the tool, uh, Dataverse? Uh, yeah, I would say yes, but I let Baptiste uh, complete. I, 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 I was, uh, I wanted to say the same. <laughs> okay, and yeah, two or two. Think... Sorry, go, sorry, Laura. No, there's an on online user guide as well, but for my users, I made also a, a guide in, in Dutch. Uh, just to highlight the, the most complicated things, because I think the roles and permissions are sometimes not really clear, because you have roles for data verses and roles for data sets, and sometimes they yeah, inherit and sometimes not. That I think that's the most complicated part for users. That could maybe be better explained in the user guide, but on the other hand, it's 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 really doable. So. No, okay. I, I would also say that you need to adapt this uh, to uh, to your own configuration of Dataverse also, of course, and uh, maybe, yeah, put up some guides uh, for your own Dataverse. Uh, it's a good idea, yes. Okay. And actually, while we're on that and while we're on Dataverse, um, is there much in the way of online training materials? for users, videos, uh, walkthroughs. Have you seen yeah. much of that? Uh, yes, uh, I would say it's a, it's a pretty, uh, it's an advantage of Dataverse because the community is really active and uh, more and more Dataverses are installed uh, across the world. So yes, you, you, you can find this pretty easily even in French for example if I look for for guides or materials or videos I will find this uh, it was not the case maybe like two years ago but now it is okay okay and so we we go to cure two for these then uh, in terms of end user documentation and online training materials for end users do we have these uh, for cure two Yes, uh, it's the same comment as before, so it is well documented. Uh, that is, uh, at the time, but now it's correct that there is one typo or bug or something, a uh, small one, but uh, uh, and a proper email uh, at the right time and in a short in a short uh, time after I get an answer. So I can say that is, uh, as you know. <laughs> So I can say that is really well documented and uh, have the the uh, how can I say uh, the information that you need and you require so for you to use it. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so a question here that says, how do I convert Nestar DDI 122 to DDI 2.5 for use with Kua or Dataverse? What happens if the metadata is not in English? I guess many of you who are previous Nestar users have had uh, the pain or the pleasure of doing this. Uh, can we start with Dataverse? What we did, I, I can answer for one part of the question maybe Baptiste can complete my answer uh, what we did is that we we worked with uh, R with some R scripts uh, and we converted one DDI 1.2 to DDI 2.5 and then the IT team uh, imported this in uh, Dataverse and uh, to my knowledge some extra work was was done again on the on the XML but Maybe Bat Batiste can complete uh, uh, my answer. Yes. Um, since we mo we changed the the fields we have in our database to implement the CMN, uh, we had to do some extra work because uh, these fields aren't um, 
supported by default. So we had to to use the API to do some updates. And also, if you import uh, DDI into Dataverse, you will only have the metadata and not the variables. But I think uh, I, I'm not really... Uh, the study level metadata, you only have the study level metadata, you don't have the variable metadata uh, and the variable display, you, you don't have all this. But I, I've heard about uh, the ingest uh, feature uh, another time, but I don't really know about it. Maybe someone else uh, knows. Yes, if your, your uh, variables are in a in tabular file, and if you have the tabular file ingest on, Dataverse will um, recognize the variables in this tabular file. But then it should be a, a SPSS file or a CSV. And then you can um, see it, at, and then you can uh, search for it in the advanced search for variables, and you can do a DDI codebook export where the variables are. Uh, also visible in this export. Uh, for us uh, who are ex Nestar users, in fact, in Nestar we had like this uh, really pretty nice variable displays, and you could perform some um, data analysis. Not very, not huge. I mean, not very important analysis but still you could like cross do cross tabs and stuff like that and uh to my knowledge but correct me if i'm wrong we don't have this in dataverse i think it's something that it's missing but it's a work in progress if i'm correct so as it's needed by the community i think it will uh be available available at a certain point Um, we haven't uh, really come to the point um, of using this, but aren't there some plugins like uh, Data Explorer um, with which uh, you can analyze data on Dataverse too? I think there are, and uh, we are on the. We are going to test them. We tested some. Uh, yeah, yeah, there. I think there are. But it's, uh, it's something the community needs, I think, at least for statistical data. Okay. And for q 2 Well, in q 2 and Patricia can also add something after, uh, basically Nestar uses the DDI-122. And uh, we we had that uh, that kind of files. Uh, then Patricia had to make some modifications, uh, maybe according with that CMM model. Um, and um, and the um, the model DDI 2.5 uh, came as a consequence of using Kua. So the translation was made using Kua in the sense. But uh, answering to the question, I know that Patricia had to make some modifications to the initial uh, file that came from the Nestar. Uh, about the language, about the language, like I said before, uh, we use the language on the top of the files. You use the language equal PT in some fields but uh, in some fields do not say the most of the fields and even and even so uh, the uh, uh, what is the error that that occurs uh, the file is in portuguese but in the catalog uh, when the harvest is done says that the language is english okay this is the error um, so basically this i think patricia will add something Yes, uh, that's, that was uh, what uh, I was about to say, that uh, the main issue is that in CSLAT catalog it appears as in English, even if we uh, try to add PT uh, instead of uh, EN, but uh, maybe because of Nestar it is the default language, and even if we change it, 
it doesn't recognize that we don't know why and even if ricardo uh, uh, in cua uh, in that file uh, enters uh, pt it does not recognize we don't know why um maybe because of the of the fields that are xml length so um, maybe next uh, next step is uh, uh, and there was uh, already the suggestions to to change the xml file from uh, DDI 1 to 2, but uh, the question is uh, that harvesting is in 2.5, I think. So even if the XML file in CES, the metadata validator, goes well, I don't know if there will um, will function. Will uh, <laughs> If we have a good output, then in CES, the data catalog, we'll see. <laughs> uh, they catalog harvests are both uh, in 1.2.2 and 2.5 um, so it uses different components depending on what it's expecting from the endpoint mm -hmm. um, we do have a fix in the catalog for when we can't in the current version of the catalog you see um, we we made a design decision that if we couldn't um, find a language indicator we assumed English by mm -hmm. default, you know, which is wrong in a lot of cases, but right mm -hmm. in plenty of cases. Um, in the current development version of the catalog, we can change the default based on the endpoint. Uh, that doesn't work very well if you have multilingual uh, study level metadata, but if all of it's in Portuguese or all of it's in French, we can tag your endpoint as being French or Portuguese or whatever, um, even though we're not seeing a language tag and then we can display it in the correct language. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a fix at our end, but but really um, it needs, it, you know, as I say of all these things, it needs to be fixed at the service provider's end, because even if it's right for the data catalog, anyone else um, harvesting your OAI PMH endpoint will have the same difficulties if they're not getting a language indicator, so. Okay. Um, Right, thank you. Um, so, um, and this one is about upgrades. Uh, have any of you lived through the um, the process of upgrading Dataverse or Kua 2 from one major version to another? And if you have been around when you've done the upgrade, um, has that been difficult from a content point of view? Uh, you know, I'm assuming that from a technical point of view, there'll be some highs and lows. Uh, but has the content come straight across or have you had to export and re-import the content or something similar in order to make it compatible with the new version of the tool? Um, can anyone answer that for Kua 2, please? Uh, in my case, uh, not been there, not done that yet. <laughs> so it was not needed. <laughs> so, okay. uh, I don't have experience. Okay, um, Tony, can you give us an unbiased answer on this one, please? Is it is it a straightforward upgrade path? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the database itself is uh, no SQL database. It's it's MongoDB. So uh, if if there are changes in the record schema. Uh, uh the kind of changes that that only add new fields or add new attributes to existing fields it should be pretty straightforward but uh if, if there would be any any uh destructive changes for for instance deleting and deleting an uh field or something like changing its its name or something like that then it's it's not that easy but uh, so far, uh, Kuha 2 hasn't seen any such uh, destructive changes, but uh, they could be uh, tackled with, with having a migration script uh, to migrate from, from a certain database uh, structure to another. But so far, Kuha 2 hasn't seen, seen such changes. So. So, okay. and that's more of like the technical point. It's not really the content point. No, no. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Tony. I can speak for Databus. Okay. Uh, uh, the upgrade uh, procedure is not always really straightforward. Uh, I can only speak for until uh, the version 4.2, uh, but um, when upgrading, um, Databus uh, gives us um, upgrade scripts scripts uh, and a really comprehensive uh, a really comprehensive instructions but what is a bit more challenging is that you might have to run multiple scripts uh, like um, for example if you have uh, you want to upgrade to three versions later you might have to run three scripts one for each version uh, so maybe sometimes it's not straightforward but uh, there, there, there are no impact on content. And um, uh, I know Dataverse uh, did some work about that to make it more straightforward. So maybe after the version 4.2, it's uh, better. Okay. Okay, so you're saying that for the upgrade, you can't, you can't jump a version, you have to walk through all the version upgrades to get from uh, where you are to where you want to be there's no there's no quick fix uh yeah but, it, it depends if there are some scripts to run because maybe for some versions you don't have to run scripts but if there are you have to do all all of them okay okay thank you thank you for that well i think we'll move on now to the questions that have been asked during the session um Yanes says, is there an interest among SESDA service providers to have a mailing list for discussion on issues about Dataverse? Perhaps even cooperation on development and adaptations can be agreed multilaterally and independently from SESDA shock or any other project. Um, we'll start, since that's aimed at Dataverse, we'll start with Dataverse, but of course I'd like that question answered for CUA2 as well, please. So, um, Baptiste, I think you started on this one. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so as I said uh, earlier, uh, there are multiple ways to to have discussions with the Dataverse uh, community. You can uh, use the uh, their GitHub uh, to create issues and uh, contribute to the project. But you can also uh, chat with them with uh, using their IRC chat. And there is also a Google community group uh, where you can ask questions. If I can add uh, something. Uh, I th in my opinion, there's definitely an interest among, among the SPs to have yeah, this mailing list, why not? And of course, collaboration is always welcome. I, I would say yes, definitely yes to this question. Okay. And for Kua 2? Maybe it's Tony answer that, right? Yeah, so we were uh, thinking not, not among SESTA service providers, but uh, in FSD, we were thinking about uh, creating a mailing list for, for uh, discussion on, on issues but also for for discussion on on use cases and and uh, development features and stuff like that but but this was only discussed in inside fsd so but but actually the the users of of kuha are sesta service providers so they would be the the main main audience of the list actually but nothing has been done so far, so it's only only just uh, uh, an idea. Okay, thank you. And Irena um, asks, could we use SESDA Slack for SESDA communications on Dataverse and Kua2? Uh, in principle, we could. In practice, I wouldn't advise it at the moment because of the uh, type of subscription to Slack that we've got, 
um, there's a cutoff in the number of messages that you can see. So we would eventually lose the history in the discussion about CUA2 and Dataverse. And of course, that's not what you want. You want to be able to see everything, all of the questions and answers. So as it stands, I'd say no, not suitable. Uh, there's some talk about changing the subscription model. And it says to do that and go to a model where all of the previous messages are retained, then that would certainly be an option. Um, Benjamin makes a comment. He says that for Dataverse version 4.2 and before, you can indeed add metadata fields by editing a TSV file, but these new fields do not show up in the, DD, in the DDI output, but they do show up in the JSON output. Uh, Vidas asks, are there plans um, for Dataverse to support multilingual DDI? Does anybody know? Uh, but doesn't it, or it's already supporting it if I'm not wrong? I may be wrong. Uh, it, it's not uh, yet, and I don't really know if they plan on okay. doing that. Sorry. Yeah, it's a question for them, I think, for Dataverse, <laughs> if somebody okay. is listening and <laughs> might answer. And uh, can we just have a confirmation as to whether or not CUA2 currently supports uh, multilingual DDI? Uh, like yeah. I said, uh, yeah, Tony, go ahead. Yeah, so... Uh... Uh, yeah, the the metadata, the DDI file, uh, can be in one one language or in multiple language. Uh, the language should be included in each XML element, nodes, XML lang attribute, or if the whole document is in in one language, it could be in the root elements XML lang attribute, and uh, if a child element has no XML lang, then Kuha defaults to the root elements XML lang. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if the root element and child elements have no XML lang, so there's no no XML lang attribute anywhere in the document, then Kuha2 defaults to English. So, so it, it does support multilingual DDI files and as an input and as output also. Okay, good. Uh, Costis asks, what about multilingual, sorry, I'll try that again. What about the multilinguality of metadata values? E.g., if I want to add multiple titles in multiple language, is this possible via metadata enrich enrichment environment during the submission process? Um, I, we'll go back to Kua 2. I mean, I I'm think I'm, I'm hearing that's a yes. But um, yeah, funny. if I if I if I understand correctly, I think I think this is yes, but I don't know what what is a metadata enrichment or submission process here. Um. Uh, I, well, I guess that. Um, um, my guess would be that refers to when you're sat in front of the uh, the application um, typing in the metadata, then you have some way of indicating the language, you know, per per field uh, that you're inputting. Yes, it's yeah. it's what we do. Yeah, it's what we do in Lisbon. Yeah, but there there is issues like we explained before. But yeah. maybe we are doing something wrong. Okay, to clarify. Okay, and for DDI, um, we, we're waiting. No, sorry, for DDI, for our database, um, that's yet to come. Okay, um, Benjamin says, uh, the R scripts developed by Pregido Sciences Po to modify the XML DDI files sound very interesting. Have Pregido Sciences Po shared or published these scripts? Uh, we have not yet. Um, it's pretty difficult to publish them because uh, on the one hand they are really 
uh, suitable for our metadata. Uh, and uh, the second reason is that they are not uh, documented. We only have the, the scripts, but uh, of course I can send them to anyone who, who wishes to, to reuse them. And um, Benjamin will get in touch. I can send it to you, no problem. And if somebody else wants them, they are they are available, but they, they are not documented. And unfortunately, as I was saying, the person who did this is no longer with us. So it's um, it's pretty difficult at this stage to find the time to, to document all this, but uh, they are shareable with, and uh, we can share them with you. Okay. Um, right, I'm just checking the questions window, I think. Uh, I think we've covered all the questions that were asked in advance and that have been asked today. So um, I, I think um, we're ready to wind it up, uh, unless any of the panelists have any other general remarks to make about Dataverse or CUA, which would help the audience. I'll just throw the floor open for a moment um, to say, is there, is there anything else you'd like to say about CUA2 or Dataverse, which we haven't covered already, in terms of your experience of adopting, uh, using, managing, upgrading, installing, working with generally? Anybody? Okay. Um, so I think um, that's it from, from us. Uh, so I just want to thank uh, all the attendees um, for spending the time to, um, to listen to the panel session and submit questions. A uh, big thank you to the panelists for sharing your experiences and answering the questions. And, thank you. Um, thank you. And if you've got any other questions relating to the content of today's webinar, you can contact me via email at john.shepherdson at sesda.eu and I'll pass the questions on to the panellists. Uh, once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the event. Uh, please provide your feedback by completing it. It's very useful to know um, what we did well and what we could do better another time. You'll receive a follow-up email within a week or so with a link to view the recording of the webinar. So on behalf of SESDA main office and our panelists, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, and it's goodbye from us. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Bye bye. Bye.